U.S. border states seem to be scrambling to process thousands of undocumented and unaccompanied children who have crossed the Mexico border into the U.S. Here to discuss the options for these children in our region are my guest, Elizabeth Camarena with Casa Cornelia Law Center and immigration attorney Lilia Velasquez. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Elizabeth, remind us of where these children are coming from and why they're fleeing. Uh, in our practice, we have seen uh, a really a concentration of children coming from Central America, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador. That's, that's the three main countries that are coming. And why they are coming, uh, there are a lot of push factors that have um, made parents, family members, and the children themselves choose to leave. Uh, for the most part, the stories that we have been hearing, the increasing violence in every one of those countries. What kind of increase as far as the number of these children coming into the county area uh, have you been seeing? Have you been seeing a rise or has it stayed the same here? There ha we have seen a steady increase since the late 2012. Uh, we saw about 300 children last year. And so far between January and May of this year, we have already seen a 70% increase in the children that we are serving. 70, 70%. 70, specifically the unaccompanied children. And just briefly, if you would, what are some of the challenges uh, to house these children? In San Diego County, the challenge is that there are not enough beds. That space is very, very limited. There are not enough shelters to house them. And also, not enough place for them to be able to receive the legal services they, they need and that our laws mandate. And the UN High Commissioner of, for Refugees reports that many of these children may qualify for asylum, political asylum, or a special visa. What are their legal options? I think that probably the option that they would follow the most will be to go the route of political asylum. Uh, it is very difficult because you need to demonstrate that the persecution that you suffer or will suffer is on account of five grounds, which is political opinion, religion, race, nationality, and membership in a particular social group. In the past, uh, such applicants have applied under membership in a particular social group, specifically that they are young adults that are being targeted by gang members for recruitment or to join organized crime. Now, clearly, that is going to be probably the avenue they will pursue, but their chances of prevailing on those facts are very, very small. Well, from the photos I've seen, some of, some of these children are, are five years old. Some of these children are very, very young, probably not a, a gang quite ready for the uh, gang initiation, it seems. Um, what happens, Lilia, to the children who don't qualify for the uh, political asylum or a special visa? Well, actually, they, they can apply for asylum, and the process is very, very slow. Uh, if they have no attorney, they're going to go to the judge and say, can you give me an extension? Right now, they're scheduling cases two years, two years into the future. So they can be in the system, you know, logged in for many, many years, even if their asylum case is not very strong. The other avenue would be special immigrant juvenile visa, and I know the Casa Cornelia handles quite a few of them. My office does too, and that is for people that have no parents, uh, they're neglected, and they become wards of the state, in essence. And in some cases, relatives say, I want to get permanent guardianship for my nephew. And they go to court, they get the permanent guardianship, and then they can get them legal status because their parents are not caring for those kids. And Elizabeth, is that part of what you were talking about is why maybe these, is there some uh, maybe push coming from these countries saying, hey, look, even if you get across, you're going to get a couple of years in the United States while we go through this process. Well, that has been. Um a question that has been raised over and over again. In our practice, we have seen that that is not necessarily the, the only reason that these children are coming. And uh, we have seen that the gangs and, and violence in those countries are is affecting younger and younger at, at, at a point where 10-year-olds are being targeted for gang recruitment or uh, if they are not accepting their recruitment efforts, uh, they are uh, victimized. What would you like to see happen on a local or state level uh, in order to uh, cope with this issue? I want to make sure that uh, the San Diego community knows that our, our facilities here locally don't house children that stay in the community. They are really are just processed within the system to be able to reach their family members, sponsors, or uh, Good Samaritans that will take them in. And typically, uh, the children that are housed in San Diego County uh, moved, move out. So this is really, if you can think of it as a processing center. 
uh, and not necessarily the children will be staying here permanently. Yeah, that may be some good information. Well, we are certainly following this very closely uh, on our website, kpbs.org. Elizabeth Camarena and Lilia Velasquez, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you for inviting me.